So I'm going to I'm going to give a just a brief overview of uh, COVID response in Indiana, Indiana, uh, specifically Indianapolis. Uh, um, in at the end of March, the last couple of days of March, um, uh, um, Indianapolis, uh, the EMS uh, group reached out to Regan Streif, and uh, and uh, we collaborated with them as well as with uh, with uh, open, the Indiana Health Exchange and the Open Arrest community, and and uh, I think you know it's been amazing to see what could happen in a short amount of time. So I'll give a quick overview of that. Um, so end of March, and the pandemic is is progressing through the U.S. and uh, Indiana was not spared in that, and uh, there was concern that the care system might be overwhelmed uh, by the number of COVID infected patients and uh, uh, hospitals burdened with ICU and uh, emergency rooms getting overrun. Uh, this vision was how are we going to how we're going to address this. And uh, the um, so so there was concern both for COVID infected patients, but also for folks needing urgent care um, uh, and um, and you know whether they had COVID or not, just not being able to get in through the hospital system. So the Indy EMS uh, Emergency Medical Services uh, group proposed establishing disaster field clinics or pop-up clinics uh, to address this. And they, they planned on providing, you know, setting up tents and say our state fairgrounds, uh, other venues uh, to uh, address the urgent care services, uh, uh, maybe perhaps that are non-COVID related as well as to screen, test, and, and provide uh, uh, you know, non-emergent treatment to COVID patients. Uh, and there was also a hope that the data, um, you know, the encounters that were done in this could be preserved uh, both for analysis, but also to be shared with the health exchange so that, for example, if a patient came to one of these pop-up clinics and then went and saw their primary care provider uh, or had a televisit with their care provider, they would be able to pull up the encounters from, from one of these pop-up clinics. Uh, part of the challenge was that uh, Indy EMS uh, doesn't have a patient level record system and, uh, and didn't have easy access to one. And they reached out to Regan Streif and uh, the Indiana Health Exchange. And, uh, <laughs> and we thought, well, maybe this might be a good use case for open OpenRS. And uh, what was amazing to see is that that conversation, the concept took place at the end of March and within one week we had a prototype set up to demonstrate the capabilities. Um, and, um, and now two weeks later we are uh, ready to deploy in production. And uh, so the target is dozens of users, potentially hundreds of users uh, within these pop-up clinics registering patients uh, doing basic encounters for COVID and non-COVID uh, patients, and then sending those data to the to the health exchange. Um, we use the OpenMRS reference application uh, tools within it, and uh, specifically the HTML form entry. Uh, we need to generate our own identifiers uh, for the health exchange, and IDGen is is perfect for that. Uh, it's great to have not only the seal dictionary, but also the uh, the new COVID terms that were added. And, uh, and then we've made a custom module to trigger off of um, events uh, registration or, or data collection to send HL7 messages to our health exchange. So the, the system is basically designed for a, a, a basic workflow of registering patients, capturing vitals, filling out a form, either, either our, our specific COVID form or using the kind of built-in visit note uh, within within the reference application uh, allows them to do uh, also capture diagnoses and allergies um, and uh, it supports uh, multiple locations and role management as you I think all know um, the to give you just a, an idea what our forms look like uh, this is the COVID form uh, or the I'll, I'll give it to you in pieces the history section you can see is focused on on COVID uh, related history and risk factors. Um, there's a quick uh, uh, collection of past medical history, uh, condi you know, different conditions, um, especially focusing on those that are high risk for COVID infection. Um, <coughs> a review of systems, 
again, kind of focusing in on, on those that would be most pertinent to uh, a patient experiencing a, a coronavirus infection. Um, a real simple physical exam, normal, abnormal, and a place to put additional notes. Um, what medications or therapies they're getting, and then uh, a place to uh, specify di disposition and where the patient should go from there. Uh, these forms have been published on the OpenMRS Wiki, and we can uh, share a link to this presentation as well as a link to the uh, Wiki page where we've published that. Um, the infrastructure we set up initially when we, uh, like the day, day we got the notion that we're gonna do this, we set up some digital ocean instances um, we, uh, since uh, shortly after that, the uh, health exchange took two virtual machines in there uh, behind a VPN within their production environment, um, kind of isolated them uh, because this was uh, uh, kind of a break the glass uh, uh, project. Uh, and, uh, um, and then uh, we're using Ubuntu 1804 with, uh, with Docker We've done load testing with Gatling. We were using MECOM's initializer module. Um, and it, it, if there's lessons and challenges in this effort, it's, it takes a village. Uh, we've been all hands on deck, but uh, amazing to see what we've gone from just mere concept to kind of a production uh, you know, uh, medical record system for the, for the EMS uh, within two weeks time. Uh, the, the, um, the reference application, uh, you know, for all our, our, our love-hate relationship and the things that, especially those of us that are, are, have been involved with OpenRS a long time, uh, it's easy to look at all the things that don't work and focus on what's broken and what needs to get fixed and where we need effort. But boy, you know, having that, uh, having that system where you can fire it up and, um, and get basic data collection uh, and, and form generation, vitals collection, all the basics of, of getting patients in the system really gets you to quick wins. Um, we have in the process of initially setting up uh, 2.9 and, and it comes with a, a fairly old version of the platform, ran into some issues and, and, and we see those, a lot of those being addressed in 2.10. So kudos to the OpenMRS uh, uh, community and getting 2.10, the release managers, uh, Moses et, et al of uh, getting 2.10 out the door. Um, and, uh, and metadata management is hard. It's, uh, um, I think this is a cry out for uh, 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 moving forward full strong with OCL. Um, and, uh, and then kudos to the folks that, uh, um, that have been advancing the, uh, the initializer module and, and, and tools like that. So there's a lot of people involved with this um, at Regan Streif, at, uh, at in the EMS, at the Health Exchange. Um, additional developers uh, from Regan Streif, um, and we also uh, big time uh, benefited from the community within OpenMRS, uh, the COVID response folks, um, uh, Brandon, Ellen, folks at PIH, uh, Dimitri from MECOM, Andy, um, and like I mentioned, the, the, the community, you know, uh, uh, getting the release out. So, um, I, I know I'm gone a little long, but I'll show you real quick what our encounter form looks like in paper form. And that is, um, you know, pretty much uh, true to form in terms of what you saw on the, uh, on the uh, electronic version. And then we have a non-COVID form and uh, which is, you know, not too much different. So uh, I think that since I've gone a little long, I'll stop there.